to another rousing edition of the Wrestling Rundown with your hosts, Kevin Hawk and Travis Colt. Now today we're going to talk about something serious. Smackdown. It happened. Seriously. On Thursday. On the USA Network. It did. And there, there were things that happened on there that were hard to talk about. Uh, and some really spectacular things. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to have to just kind of delve right into it on the SmackDown Rundown. What, edition 96? Jeez. So, I mean, we're doing this. Yeah, let's talk about the matches. Alright. Um, we had Baron Corbin defeat Zack Ryder. Ooh. Uh, we had Emma defeat Paige. Ooh. We had Enzo and Cass defeat The Ascension. Ooh. Go figure. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold, slow your roll real quick. Are you wait. telling me The Ascension lost. Yes. I know it's hard to believe, but we'll talk about it in just a second. We had AJ Styles defeat Alberto Del Rio. We had the VOD Villains defeat Gold Dongo. We'll get to that in a bit, too. And we had Sami Zayn defeat Chris Jericho. Uh, we'll just we'll start right from the beginning. We'll just work our way through, because everything kind of led into the next thing throughout the entirety of the show. Yeah. So we opened up with Miz TV, the guest being Maurice, uh, oh, and it was figure. it was an entire segment of Maurice and the Miz putting each other over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because they're husband and wife. That's kind of what they're supposed to do. Uh, but in the midst of it, Zack Ryder made his way down and uh, started talking some trash. Uh, you know, bringing up the fact that you know Miz might have taken the Intercontinental Title, but. Uh, he had his WrestleMania moment in front of over 100,000 people, and no one can take that away, not even The Miz. Yep. And so then he he ends up making a challenge to The Miz for the Intercontinental title. Maurice asks the fans if they want to see it. Of course we want to see Zack Ryder defeat The Miz and take the Intercontinental title back, because that was awesome. And The Miz accepts, and we're getting ready to have the match. And then Miz goes, oh, wait, you're already scheduled for a match. And so everyone's like, what? Against this guy. And then Baron Corbin comes out. And that's Baron Corbin. And Zack Ryder tries. He tries real hard. He does. But it's Baron Corbin. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, Baron Corbin's going through the motions of what we call new guy on the block. Yeah. Where, where you, you don't, don't lose, lose a lot. <laughs> you don't lose... Uh, at least not for another... And I guess when you accidentally do, it's a double loss. Because technically he didn't win it in match with Dolph Ziggler. This is true. He's, you stay dominant is what you do. You don't necessarily win all the time, but you stay dominant. In this case, Baron Corbin did win with a very surprising end of days. Zack Ryder uh, was coming on for possibly a Rough Rider. I'm not sure what he was going for, but it was just... A thing where he was not on the ground. It was yeah, it was very very abrupt and yeah. Uh, Corbin caught him, hit him at the end of days, uh, picked up the win, then decided that he was gonna beat the hell out of Zack Ryder some more and possibly give him the end of days on the outside, All like Dolph he, like he did to Dolph Ziggler the night after WrestleMania. But Dolph Ziggler came out, made the save, and uh, helped his buddy Zack Ryder as Baron Corbin walked away with a win. Then. We had Renee interviewing Kevin Owens, asking, "This was this was interesting. Like, why were we asking Kevin Owens's opinion on what Sami Zayn might be going through leading into a match against Chris Jericho?" Because we needed to preface that Kevin Owens was going to get involved in their match, and Shane wasn't there to stop him. Yeah. All right. That's about it. Pretty, pretty much, Renee's like, are you planning on getting involved in the match? And and Kevin Owens just 
being Kevin Owens. You know he's going to. We'll talk about that in a second. We had Emma versus Paige. Yeah. Great match. Woo! These ladies always kill it. More. Uh, <laughs> uh, Emma had a... Yeah, little... let's do it. Emma had a really good promo. Uh, her little screen and screen promo. Yeah. Uh, just putting over the fact that, you know, she used to be the lovable, goofy character, and then no one accepted her, and then Becky Lynch comes in and pretty much does the same exact thing, and she gets all the fanfare, and she's in the, the WrestleMania match, and Emma doesn't get any of it, and so after Emma beats Paige, she's going to teach Becky, she's going to teach Becky Lynch a lesson. There's a lot of L's. Teach Becky Lynch a lesson is what I was trying to say. Yeah, well, Emma left one one small, minute, minor detail out of this promo. It's that Becky Lynch was never caught with goods coming out of a Walmart. This is true. It's probably why they got rid of the whole fun-loving gimmick, because when you're a criminal, you're not allowed to have that type of gimmick. Well, I mean, that's why they Set her back demoted down to Emma off of TV for weeks. Yeah. Months. And then sent her back to NXT, which ultimately was a good thing because now she's got this really good gimmick that that works well for her. Mm -hmm. And her and her and Paige have an extremely physical match. Uh, both of them beating the crap out That's of each other. That's pretty um, yeah, Emma really taking to slamming the back of Paige's head on the turnbuckle. Yeah. Um, and th that actually became the theme of this match because Paige would set Emma up on the top rope and would go for what I'm guessing is a superplex, but uh, never really had full control. And Emma is actually able to fight her off and then actually drop down. Uh, slip through the legs. Yeah, sli slip through Paige's legs and actually yank her leg out from under her as she went face first on the top turnbuckle. That allowed Emma to pick up the win. And uh, yeah, Emma's got this mean streak going and it works really well for her. So. Yeah, I thought it was a unique finish. Yeah. In fact, you, you didn't need a move to finish the match. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was different. It was variety. We, get, we had a variety of wins on this show. You're saying that there's variety on, SmackDown. on, on a WWE show? Yeah. So much variety that Endzone cast beat the Ascension. This is the next match in the tag team tournament, deciding the number one contenders hang on, hang on, hang on. as to who will face the new day yes, and payback. Notes. Yeah, sure. There you go. Right at the top there. Are you sure mm -hmm. that you got that right? Yeah. Positive. The longest running, most dominant tag team on NXT. Yeah. Got beat by Enzo and Cass in their first match on SmackDown. Yep. I don't believe it. Not for a second. The match was very quick. It wasn't very long at all. Though the Ascension did get some offense on Enzo, a little bit on Cass, but ultimately it was uh, Connor getting booted off the apron by Cass. And then air Enzo onto Victor. Which and missed, and then they hit the fallen man and picked up the win. No. As per usual. It was air Enzo onto Victor. Enzo and Cass move forward, and they will face the Dudleys coming up very soon. I don't know when. I don't know when the next matches are. Maybe on Raw? I don't Probably. know. Probably. Then we had JoJo interviewing AJ Styles, who was uh, abruptly uh, interrupted by his opponent of the night. This is a, a, another night of first. Uh, he'd be facing Alberto Del Rio. And Del Rio, you know, talking trash, saying that, you know, he, I'm, I'm a four-time champion and, and you, you don't, you don't, you're out of your league. You don't understand where you are and you don't belong here. And he's just like, you know, I, do, I don't belong here, back here talking, but I belong out there and I plan on proving that to you. And Del Rio's like, me, me. and they had a very physical... I'm going to be real here. The okay. weird part of the promo to me is Del Rio weirded me out a little bit by saying he could smell that AJ Styles didn't belong. I was weirded out by the way he cut his shirt. It was a very... 
I don't know what that was. He's just trying to show off a little cleavage. <laughs> it's weird. Like just, just He do, doesn't like the collar. Just do the do, do the V thing. But then it would cut into his logo. Who gives a shit? He wants people to see that he's the pride of Mexico. We get it! Some people might not. Probably, Stop. Probably most people. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was a this was a fun match though. It was. It was. Uh, it was probably my favorite match. Of it the was. A, it was a good. You know, it, for a first time ever, they 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 clicked very yeah. well. Um, and uh, the the interesting thing, because a lot of the a lot of the superstars are over in uh, in Europe right now. They're doing a European tour. And yeah, most uh, of them took off after Raw. And so Del Rio was by himself. He didn't have Rusev or Sheamus in his corner, so it was strictly one on one, which yeah. I think really helped. Uh, you know, rather than AJ trying to, you know, move out of the way of some sort of shenanigans from Sheamus not having, to, not having to have eyes in the back of his head. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they did a really good job of uh, countering each other's moves throughout this match as well. Uh, at one point, Del Rio's going for the du- for the double stomp. He's got AJ set up. And the trio woe, and AJ actually like holds on to him so he can't get out of the ring. Um, yeah, so some some great stuff between these two, and uh, Del Rio ends up dodging the Styles crash, uh, which puts him in the driver's seat towards the end, and he ends up going for the cross arm breaker, and he gets it on for a second, but AJ's able to use. I, I don't know if he used the momentum or if he was just able to get a split second He's early. He, okay. He's He's roly. Yeah, he is. He's that is rolly. that is a that is a phrase that is a a term coined by Kevin Hawk. Uh, AJ Styles. AJ Easy Styles, oh so roly, is able to uh, roll up Alberto Del Rio and pin him. Yeah, one, he, two, three. he rolls out of the cross arm breaker into an Oklahoma roll. Like he rolled backwards out of the cross arm breaker and then rolled forwards over Del Rio yeah. into the Oklahoma roll. So he's in, into he pinned him with a move with the word roll in it. Yeah. He he rolled into a roll, and got the, and got yeah. the pin. So, yeah, AJ Styles picking up a win over a four-time champion in WWE. Hashtag Styles be Rolly. Make that trend. That's gonna be on a T-shirt going into payback. Hashtag Styles be Rolly. I like it. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's talk about this this new team, Goldongo. Would you? Would you like to explain to the people how this team came about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Unprecedent- unprecedentedly, to my knowledge, apparently Goldust is a bit of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought after Raw that they were starting to get on the same page a minute because they were entered into the Tag Team Championship Tournament together. But then Goldust apparently went to the authority and was like, I don't want to team with our truth And they're like, alright, well, I guess we'll have to cancel the match if we don't have two teams. And then Goldust is like, no, wait, I have another partner. Let me team up with Fondango. <laughs> and he had to break the news to our truth while Fondango sat there and swiveled the entire time. <laughs> The entertainment between these two is the, on a the whole three, other level. The three of them. <laughs> and, Adding Fandango to the mix. And Fandango standing there swiveling his hips and looking at our truth and going, This is getting awkward. You're making it you're making it weird. Our truth's like, what? Gold's like, you're not dancing. You're not dancing, you're making it weird. And God. Goldust starts whipping and nay naying and it was. He did the stanky leg. Uh, he did. He did do the stanky leg, and it was. Holy shit! It was. It was a thing. Uh, but it didn't last long. The match didn't last long. <laughs> the team Goldungo probably isn't going to last long. No. Uh, the Vaude villains made quick work of uh, of this very like, bizarre. Uh, I'm talking about the hot tag of the match though, which was. It it wasn't even really a hot tag. He got the lukewarm tag. <laughs> That's yeah. He got a lukewarm tag on Simon Gotch, and it didn't help them at all. <laughs> uh, at, at one point, it did almost look like they were going to win because Goldust gives a big old clothesline to Aiden English, and they go tumbling out of the ring. So it's just Fondango and Simon Gotch, 
And I don't remember what Fandango ended up going for, but Gotch was able to counter it very easily, tag in Aiden English, and they hit the Morgling Dervish, and the Bad Villains move forward, and they will face the Usos in the semifinals. So we know all four semifinals teams. Yes. Usos uh, versus Bad Villains, and we have Enzo and Cass versus the Dudleys. So it should be cool to see who's going to end up advancing to the finals. And we got to think, with the Usos going into a match against the Bad Villains, are Gallows and Anderson going to get involved again? It's got potential. Because it did look like the... Uh, and, and unless the, unless that was just like a warning to the tag team division, like, hey, we're going to fuck up the Usos, and uh, any of you could be next. Or are the Usos directly on uh, the Bullet Club's radar? The hit list, if you would. Ha! <laughs> I like that. Bullet Club hit list. If you would. If you will, baby. Moving on to our main event, Sami Zayn main versus main. Chris... Jericho. What's up, Jay? Yeah. Sammy Zay. Jay is that about Jay? Arm drag. These get yeah, the, lots of deep arm drags. So deep. So deep. Uh, Sammy no, Zay, the, man. <laughs> those arm drags are so deep. <laughs> deep AF. <laughs> No, these guys had fantastic chemistry together. Yeah, I mean, they, these are just two naturally uh, natural people. They're humans. They are indeed. They they Organic. have natural chemistry with just pretty much anyone they face. Free range. And so when you put two of those guys in, you're bound to get a good match, and he did. And it was uh, it wasn't too long into the match that Kevin Owens decided he was going to make his way down to the ring. Yeah, he wanted to join the commentary team. Yeah, which is always welcome to me. Yeah, because Kevin Owens on commentary, Kevin Owens does his own commentary, so when you give him a microphone and he just gets to sit there and talk about other people, it's always hilarious. Yeah. But he'd make it halfway down the ramp before Dean Ambrose would also want to join in on the fun. But and he's he, giving out invitations to yeah, the Ambrose Asylum. Yeah, the Ambrose Asylum uh, officially took the place of the highlight reel on Monday Night Raw, and it's a thing now. Yeah. And it's it's going to continue being a thing. It's one of Shane McMahon's many brainchilds. Yeah. And so Dean Ambrose's... Children. Ch Childs. Is Dream Childs. Childs. I didn't even realize. Childs is not the uh, plural for children. It can be here, though. No, it Portland here. Moving on. So, we have... God. So we have Ambrose, and we have Owens at Comic. This is all I'm here for anymore, is stupid puns. <laughs> I'm officially the Jerry Lawler of this team. <laughs> okay. Speaking of that, Lawler had some good ones. Yeah. Going back to the Emma versus Paige match. Uh, Calling him a fine apple? Yeah, pa yeah, pa yeah, Paige is a fine apple. Or no, no, no. I think they were, Emma, they Emma were, was, they were both Emma. It was, yeah. it was, if, she was a, if, she, if she's a fruit, she's a fine apple. And if she was a vegetable, she's a cucumber. Which I know as a guy who works with produce, you could be... Yes. Uh... You can't escape the shit. It's everywhere. You can appreciate the... Yes, no, it, 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 it was very puns. clever. But it's moving a back, life. Moving back, oh, yeah, that was a, that was a Morrow line. The pun, it's, it's a wonderful life. Um, yeah, moving back to the main event. Fantastic match, fantastic commentary. Like, Morrow, King... Commentary too. Morrow, King, and Byron didn't know what the fuck to do because it was a lot of bickering between Ambrose and Owens. And that was so much fun. And, like, Owens had one of the Ambrose Asylum invitate. Well, it was, it was the flyer. And Ambrose said something, and it pissed Owens off. He's like, you know what? I don't even want to be on your show anymore. And yeah, Ambrose was like, was talking about how he wanted. He actually wanted to be a guest on the Ambrose Asylum. Yeah. And then, and then Ambrose was like, uh, technically, that was an invitation. And I, who says I want you on my show anyway? <laughs> yeah, and he's like... And, you know, once you see this, it's going to be the hottest new thing in sports entertainment. You're going to apologize and ask to come on my show. Um, so, yeah, so we get uh, just a fantastic work between Sami Zayn and Chris Jericho. Uh, Sami Zayn fighting through, the, uh, fighting through the walls of Jericho and blo uh, blocking the lion's salt. Um, 
and it's Jer the corner exploder. Yeah, yeah. Jericho Jericho gets hit with the corner exploder, but dodges the haluva kick, and eventually they they find themselves on the outside, and uh, Jericho decides this is a good time to attack Dean Ambrose. Yeah, and it works out well for him. Uh, he beats the hell out of Dean Ambrose, throws him up against the the barricade on the outside, but saying. Uh, Saying Zane has backed his way towards Owens, and Owens is yelling at him like, "How do you like that, Sammy? How do you like it?" And Jericho makes his way back over to Sammy, and then Sammy backdrops Jericho onto Kevin Owens' head while he's sitting in the commentary t chair. It was that's uh, I can't imagine that that felt good. Having Canadian, a Canadian commentary crash. That was good alliteration. Uh, I'm illiterate. So, both Owens and Ambrose have been taken out on the outside. Uh, fight ends up going back to the ring, and I think Sammy was possibly setting up for another haluva kick. And Owens says no. Yeah, Owens uh, ends it and clotheslines a shit out of Sammy Zayn, and so we get a disqualification, and so we get the double team on Sammy for a bit, and Ambrose comes in, evens it up, so. I think I'm sensing, or I'm Teddy Longing, a tag team match for Monday Night Raw. Your Teddy sense is tingling. My Teddy sense is tingling. Exactly. I'm uh, I'm I'm envisioning Monday Night Raw this Monday. Ambrose, play up, play up, play up. and Zane versus Owens and Jericho. If if it's anything, Owens any and Jericho. Kind of a, <laughs> any kind of a you know. Precursor from the last tag team match. Yeah, Mo Monday Night Raw. Jericho and Owens are going to be up to some funny shenanigans. If it's anything like them facing Styles and Cesaro, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, but that was it for SmackDown. Mm -hmm. so it was a, a, a very simple show. Still some great matches. Uh, we got some advancements in the tag team tournament. That's and uh, we got some build towards payback. So, yeah. thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Comment what your favorite match from SmackDown was. Comment what do you think about the uh, the build towards Payback? Are you are you looking forward to any type of matchup? What do you think of? Uh, well, we got two matches set so far. Yeah. So what do you think about these two those two matches? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to click all the links down in the description. They'll take you to all of our various social medias. Please comment for my sake. On a scale of one to ten, how surprised were you that the Ascension lost? Yeah, Com comment. How, how surprised were you? Um, For me, yeah. it's about an 11. Click all of that social media so you can get uh, updates. Click when it on. Updates when videos go up. We share stuff on the Facebook. We post weekly pictures on the Instagram. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us in any way, shape, or form, you can contact us on all of those through Twitter and the emails. And if you don't like looking at our faces, you can Email check it me. out. I'll give you his phone number. If you don't like looking at our faces, you can check out that podcast. Yeah. Because it's Where you there. Can hear us without the faces. And regardless of what it is, share. If you don't like us, share it with an enemy. If you like us, share it with your friends. If you're Have ambivalent, them. share it with a stranger. Yeah, just share it on your, your Twitter and see who finds Share it, it with somebody named Sharon. Sure. We got room for Sharons. We're always in the mood for Sharon. That sound weird? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, check out the playlist because that's got all the rest of the videos that we're doing this week. There's a multiple review. levels though. There's a midweek wrap up, <laughs> SmackDown rundown, and God damn it, there's gonna be an indie news next. Holy shit! There's gonna be a indie news. There's gonna be a king indie news. Jordan, to you. What? King indie news. Indie news. Indie news. Okay. You better watch it. I'm gonna tell you to watch it again because that's what I do. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Now it's Riley. Fuck the the Miz. <laughs>